What's up, y'all? Wes Rucker and Patrick Brown from Go Vols 24-7 bringing you today's No Huddle here from Anderson Training Center on the University of Tennessee campus. It is Tuesday of Georgia week. The, the Vols and the Dogs will see where each team is in the college football playoff rankings when those come out here just a little bit later. Um, but what we do know is that they're both going to be in contention to make this a really important game, Patrick. It's another, another day closer to it. It's a big game. And today, uh, the final day where we're on campus talking to people this week, uh, we did get to speak with Tennessee defensive coordinator Tim Banks. Uh, running backs coach Darrell Sims, also Dylan Sampson and Jermod McCoy. I guess we'll start, Patrick, with, with Dylan Sampson. Uh, he, he came out, he said, listen, I'm sore. It, it's, at, it's what I signed up for. Right. I played through it. I mean, it, we didn't expect to hear anything else from him, did we? Yeah, I mean, he, he obviously was shaken up there in the late uh, late in the second quarter against Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. Went into the locker room a little bit early, but came back out in the second half and played through it. And, and as you said, Wes, he, he said, hey, this is what I signed up for. And, he talked about you have to be honest with yourself about how healthy you are and honest with your coaches as well and, and determine if you can play through it. And he felt that he could and uh, he, he played through it, too. So um, he, he's worked through uh, obviously in the offseason worked to make himself more durable mm -hmm. and he's had to be more durable because Tennessee's leaned on him pretty hard with, with some of the young running backs behind them. Uh, we'll, we'll see what that situation looks like moving forward this week. But uh, certainly he's a guy that has proven to be able to handle 25, 30 carries in a game and. Uh, to, you know, we'll see how much they need him on Saturday night. He also, of course, spoke about the fumble right. issue, which is something that, again, every time Dylan Sampson talks, you see exactly why he has that C on his chest. Yeah. Everybody knows what he's about. Everybody knows what kind of player he is. But he's also a player who had never lost a fumble in his yeah. college football career until the past three games, and he's lost one per game, and that's bothering him. Yeah, he's not. I don't think he's like walking around the class with a football, like yeah. like the old school punishment for fumbles. Um, but uh, you know, Darrell Sims said that it, it's kind of a uh, the cause is kind of him fighting for extra yards, which Samson said is just kind of natural instinct as a running back. You always want to get every yard you can. But um, Sims talked about just sometimes you need to be a little bit more aware that, okay, you, you've maxed this run out enough, go down or cover the ball more. Um, because when, you know, the longer you stay up trying to get more yards, the more guys have a chance to come in and punch it out, rip it out. And, and we've seen that in the last couple of games. So, you know, Samson said, you know, he was pretty demonstrably upset after the, the one the other night. Yes. And so, uh, he, he said multiple times that it's going to get fixed. So uh, he's got a tough defense to do it against, but uh, obviously that'll be a big key that, that he doesn't put the ball on the, on the ground in this game. Yeah, if he spiked his, uh, if he spiked the football like he spiked that helmet, that might be a 15-yard penalty. He was not <laughs> happy. Um, but I think it's a great point that, that Dylan Sampson has been so elite all season yeah. and really throughout his career, finding extra yards. He's been finding those two to three extra yards, at the end, sometimes five, six yards at the end yeah. of runs. But when you do that, there is a risk, obviously, that things are going to go that way. Uh, also, they spoke about playing on the road offensively. Uh, we know people don't like to hear it, but that's been a challenge for Tennessee at times in the hypo area, something they got to get cleaned up. Yeah, crowd noise at practice today, pretty standard. And uh, I think they've got to handle the noise. We haven't really seen, you know, you go back to this game two years ago, they had false starts, things like that. They really didn't see that too much in the, in the two row games they played at Oklahoma and at Arkansas. Obviously, this probably will be a little bit of a different scenario. I mean, Athens is loud, but so are those other places too they played in. So uh, they've, they've got to handle the noise and, and not do the little stupid things, like, you know, not jump false start, not line up wrong, those kind of things that you can avoid. You know, we hear Hypo talk about all the time, control what you can control. Those are things you can control. And for as many guys in this offense that have played a lot of football, you would expect them to not have those issues pop up on the road. And I guess switching gears to, to defense here on today's no huddle, I, I, I think, you got some interesting stuff today because Tim Banks, Tennessee's defensive coordinator, was asked point blank what he thought about some of the rushing defensive issues the past couple of weeks. And he said, you know, I, I haven't watched much of it. I don't I don't know off the top of my head. Basically, it was an interesting answer uh, to basically say maybe yeah, he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, but certainly the numbers are still great. But the past couple of weeks, there have been some issues with run fits and such. Getting well, off yeah, and, and he said that he said they haven't played everything perfectly, but uh, they haven't, you know, uh, but they've also played pretty well. And when, when you talk about things that aren't going well for this defense, he almost always goes back to, did we win the game or not? Uh, that's sort of been his vibes MO. Vibes-based, vibes-based. Even going back to, you know, the, the 2022 game with, you know, I remember talking to him at the Orange Bowl after, you know, people were still talking about that South Carolina game. And he said, hey, our defense is good enough that we won 10 games this season, so we're not that bad. So, um, yeah, the run defense is, is, you know, he also talked about, you know, they play with some lighter boxes against Mississippi State. Yeah. He mentioned Kentucky is, you know, has, you know, is a good running team, which mm -hmm. is, you know, usually pretty true. So, uh, you know, they're obviously working to clean that stuff up. He just wasn't really willing to talk about it too much publicly. Yeah, it was kind of – he's more of a vibes-based grader publicly. Uh, you know, he's like, well, how many points did the other team score? Did Tennessee win the game? Those are the things that That's he tends to care about. Yeah, I guess so. And Jermon McCoy talked about how he was not sure 
Um, he, he had never been to Athens. Uh, he, he did not make the mistake of saying it was not loud. He just said uh, that he has not played in his career, but he has heard it's loud. Yeah, yeah. He said, you know, coming from Texas and playing in the Pac-12 last season at Oregon State, he, he was excited to, to play in some of these venues. He said Neyland's the loudest and the biggest stadium he's played in, and he's heard that Athens is loud, and he's excited to play in that, that scenario. Too. I asked him about uh, the punt return dynamic because he and Squirrel and Bucard are all have all had good moments there, and, and he kind of joked that. You know those defensive guys. You know, he played on. You know, play, he played wide receiver in high school too. So uh, they, they want the they want the ball in their hands as much as they can. Uh, and obviously, Squirrel plays offense. So that that's a good situation to have back there. And uh, based on last week, I think Bucard will have that that job moving forward as he should. But. Uh, it's good to know that if anything happens, they've got three guys they can maybe roll in there and, and still have that threat back there. Yeah, maybe you're a tiny bit apprehensive about putting a freshman back there, but I, I think you roll the dice and you just go with him. He looked pretty good yeah. doing that last week, and, and we will see. This is a big week for Tennessee. It's a big week for Georgia, too. People calling it an elimination game for both teams. Don't know if that's accurate. It absolutely is an elimination game for Georgia, though. It's a big game. We'll have boots on the ground. We'll be down there on Saturday. We'll have more leading up through the week about that. Got a lot of Tennessee football basketball and baseball chatter right now at GoVol 24-7's checkerboard. So go check all of that out there. For Wes Rucker, that's Patrick Brown.